over the past few months or so, I have taken on a project to try and turn algae into fuel. The reason being that algae shows a lot of promise as a sustainable feedstock for a variety of things, including foodstuffs, fertilizers, uh, fine chemicals, and crucially could serve as a carbon neutral or potentially even carbon negative feedstock for sustainable clean fuels. So far in this project, I have started a new algae culture, a new chlorella culture, which is the strain of algae I'm using for this project. I have investigated different ways of hastening the growth of this algae and have also experimented with different modes of growth, such as mixotrophy and heterotrophy to try and hasten growth further and increase biomass, lipid concentration, and all that good stuff. Today I'll be showcasing the actual process of harvesting this algae and also extracting the lipids from this dry biomass, which is an important step in producing algae biodiesel. So without further ado, welcome to my latest installment of Doing It Ourselves, and welcome to the latest installment of my algae to fuel product. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This is my main chlorella culture. And while it may seem that there's a fair amount of algae in there, and there is, most of the culture medium is just water. And this needs to be siphoned off. But before it can be siphoned off, we need to allow the algae to settle to the bottom so that when the water is siphoned we don't take any or we don't take a lot of algae with it which will result in losses. Allowing algae to sediment to the bottom of cultures is also a convenient way to harvest the wet biomass later. So after I let the algae sediment to the bottom I got to work straight away on siphoning most of the water from the culture medium. This water can be safely discarded into the environment. There is only trace amounts of fertilizer in there, along with some dead algae cells. But if you want, you can reuse culture mediums if you have a healthy culture that hasn't experienced significant stress. Once I had siphoned off most of the water, I closed the lid on the container that my culture was in, I agitated it a little, and I was left with a nice deep green algae concentrate, which I poured into a reused milk jug. I then repeated the sedimenting and siphoning process once again, except on this time a smaller scale, and then transferred the yet more concentrated uh, concentrate into a smaller plastic bottle. Essentially what I'm doing with my culture is making it progressively more concentrated via siphoning off most of the water and then placing it into progressively smaller containers until I have a concentrate that's more workable than what I started with. Okay so now we've gone from culture to concentrate but what we now need to do is go from concentrate to dry biomass. I tried gravity filtration and it just didn't work, or at least was working way too slowly. Historically, I've tried vacuum filtration with different strains of algae and it's failed every time because what's happened is with both a glass frit and with paper filters, the algae has just clogged them and so water from the medium couldn't be filtered through and so I was unable to dry the biomass very efficiently that way. This leaves me with only one option, which is just dehydrating a concentrate. And so that's what I did. So I placed a small tub containing my concentrate into a food dehydrator and let it run until it was dry. Using the food dehydrator worked pretty effectively in drying the biomass, however, I was pretty disappointed with the result. You see, when it was wet, it looked a lot more than this, and I was going to need a lot more algae to begin the extraction part of the process. So I had to grow a fair bit more. Luckily, through growing my main culture and through various experiments, 
I was able to accumulate enough algae to dry and begin the extraction. But before I could move on to extracting the lipids, there was one last step I needed to take in order to make that possible. And that was to break down the algae cells. You see, the cell walls of algae like chlorella are pretty tough and need to be broken down in order for things like lipids to be extracted from them. Luckily, I had just the magic bullet for that. So I took all of my algae and blended it up into a fine powder. And what I was left with was a dry weight of about 13.5 grams to work with, which was actually a lot more than I was expecting. However, I don't think my algae was completely dry. But anyway, it was time to move on to the extraction. What I have here is a piece of kit called a Soxlet extractor. And what it does is it repeatedly cycles solvent in order to create extracts from solid materials which are placed in the main chamber. And the way it works in simple terms is a flask full of solvent gets evaporated and condensed into the chamber. The chamber fills up with solvent. The solid material inside the chamber mixes with the solvent and creates an extract which then gets siphoned off back into the flask. And the same solvent keeps getting recycled over and over again until you have a concentrated extract. Now, when it comes to the choice of solvent for this extraction, I have a variety at my disposal, which are all somewhat suitable for this experiment. Pentane is an ideal solvent for this. It's non-polar, it has a really low boiling point, so it can cycle really, really easily. However, it is pretty bad environmentally, as it is non-renewable and comes from fossil fuel sources. So you might think that ethanol would be a better choice. Well, ethanol still has a relatively low boiling point, and it is more eco-friendly than pentane, much more so. However, it is far too polar of a solvent to effectively extract lipids from our algae. So you might think that something like limonene would be a good choice. It's eco-friendly, it's readily available, it's really non-polar, so it dissolves other non-polar things pretty well, like fats and lipids and whatnot. However, limonene has quite a high boiling point, so it makes using it for Soxlet extractions more challenging. The solvent I have chosen for this extraction is ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate has a good combination of a reasonably low boiling point of about 77C. It's relatively renewable and sustainable as both the ethanol and acetic acid can be derived from the same stuff, which are renewable feedstocks. And crucially, it is lipophilic enough, it is non-polar enough to dissolve the lipids from our dry algal biomass. Now, since I've never done something like this before, I thought I'd just go small to start with. So I took a small sample and made a little uh, tea bag of sorts out of uh, some of my algae. Uh, I, I wrapped it up in a paper filter and tied it up with some string and put it into the chamber of my Soxlet extractor. Then into the flat bottom flask, which came with my Soxlet extractor, I added some ethyl acetate and a stir bar to prevent bumping. I assembled the Soxlet apparatus with the included condenser and I attached the condenser to my safe portable water source, which is something I will talk about in more detail in another video. Anyway, the next thing I did was I turned on heating, turned on stirring, turned on the pump for my condenser, and I waited. And after a while, solvent started to boil and condense in the main chamber of the succulent extractor. As solvent filled the extractor, the extract took on a deep green color, indicating a strong presence of chlorophyll. This looks pretty, but becomes an annoyance later down the road. After a while, the siphon tube on my extractor 
filled up and the extract started to flow back into the flask. This process would repeat for a number of cycles until the extraction was complete. After I got comfortable with the process, I repeated it on a larger scale with the rest of my algae. After all was said and done, I was left with a dark green extract. And now it was time to strip off all of the solvent and see what I was left with. So I set up my distillation apparatus, just a simple distillation, no vacuum, nothing fancy. And I stripped off all of the ethyl acetate from the crude extract and awaited the final result. At about 75C, Ethyl acetate started to come over as expected and this only hastened with increasing temperature, topping out at about 78C. What I was left with in the end was a dark brown oily liquid, which I assume is mostly lipids with some degraded pigments here and there. In the end, I got about 3.3 grams of very crude algal lipids. And this equates to, assuming it is mostly lipids, about a 22% yield, which I think is pretty decent considering it's my first time. Though, judging by the color, this is still very impure. Looking back, what I would have done, and which I will try in the future, is trying to extract the chlorophyll from the algae first before the lipids, perhaps with a more polar solvent, to try and remove as much uh, pigment impurities as possible so that I can get a purer product of lipids from my algae. Anyway, regardless, next time I want to try and see what I can do with this and see if I can make some biodiesel out of it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like what you see, give a like and subscribe and let me know what you think down in the comments. Take care and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye for now.